is the latest quilt I just finished. The pattern is called Color Junction and you see it has a 3D effect. And this video will show you how I pieced it. Here is the pattern I'm using and it's called Color Junction and it's by Patterns by Fabric Therapy, the Quilters Clinic. And the finished size on the cover is 70 inches by 102, but I didn't want to make mine quite as long, so I'll show you how I shortened it. You open this pattern up, and inside you have a full color diagram. And this is what I followed. You'll see up here the rows are numbered, and you're going to piece vertical rows. There are 26 vertical rows. So let's put this to the side for now. You're going to choose 12 different accent fabrics. So you'll have four colorways, and in each colorway you're going to have a light, medium, and dark. And then you're also going to have black for the background and for the border. And this tells you how many three inch strips to cut, and this tells you how many number of triangles to subcut. To subcut these, you're, you need an equilateral triangle. Now these strips are all three, in, three inches. So here's the three inch strip and here's my equilateral triangle ruler I used. You probably can't see it, but it's pretty big. It makes eight, eight inch, up to eight inch wide. But if you have a smaller one, it's probably going to be easier to handle. Now in the, uh, in the instructions, you'll see that it has the strip going horizontally, but I found it's easier to place the strip vertically. If I put it like this, and then I cut it, I'm going from side to side like this and cutting instead of going this way and this way and this way and this way. And it's, it's harder with a bigger ruler, but if you have a smaller one, it, it probably won't make a difference. Before you cut out all of your triangles, you might want to cut a few and do a test piece. This is a close-up of the triangles you'll cut, and you'll see here this has uh, chopped off, the point is chopped off here, and the two points here are still there. And this will come into play later when you're piecing all of the triangles together. So I took um, a black fabric and then just three of the others and stitched all the way around the black fabric because I wanted to see how well it stitched. And I'm pretty pleased with it. So you should have a nice perfect point and from the point to the edge of the fabric should be about a quarter of an inch. So that's pretty close, and this is pretty close, and so is this one. I'm going to measure, just for kicks and grins, the sides of the triangles, and it's roughly two and three quarter inches on the side, so each side should be two and three quarter inches. Now the height of the triangle is about two and a half inches. So just for a reference of how big these are. So do your test, and then when you're happy with your test, then go ahead and cut all of your uh, triangles and put them in bags. I cut all my strips first, and then I used heavy starch, and I took the eight strips of the uh, accent color, so eight of each color, and I pressed each one, one at a time, and, and layered them and pressed them with starch each time because I wanted it as stiff as it could be. So I laid all eight layers out like this, and then I used my ruler and I cut all these triangles just like this. I kept them separate in these little bags, and I marked them, like this is my dark yellow, this is light yellow and medium yellow, and so here are the others, and here are all my little bags. Now the fun part starts. I told you at the beginning that this, this quilt finishes at 102 inches, and for me that was too long. So I wanted to take off, I know that my triangle is a roughly two and a half inches tall, and so I counted up um, probably 10 or 20 from the bottom, and I marked a little mark. So I counted up uh, 10 or 12 from the bottom and I put a little mark here and then on the other side I counted the same space and put a mark here. And that's going to tell me where I'm going to stop 
I took these little stickies and I lined them up right where this mark is and it cuts these lower these this row of triangles in half. You can see how this triangle you can see how this triangle these triangles here are all cut in half but for our purposes we're going to treat that like a whole one and what we're going to do is follow this first vertical line and when we get down here we're going to count this half piece as one and we're going to add a black piece to it we're always going to start with the black at the bottom so we put the black down and then this is dark yellow so I'm going to take two full dark yellows even though this is a half we're going to call it a hole right now because we can we're going to cut it off later so there you put two dark yellows then you put one light yellow and you're stacking these on the top over here and then two medium reds two light reds then a black and you're going to do that all the way down until you go all the way to the top and you always end with a black one so you do that and then you're going to stitch the first row and what I always do is I layer the first row from bottom to top then I go from top to bottom and I check to make sure the colors are correct then you're going to stitch them and I'll show you how you're going to stitch those I'm on row 15 right now and now this is real important here this is where I really got confused and I had to stop a few times and rip out okay so let's just look at this part here this is row I'm on row 15 I'm going to start piecing row 15 and you need to really pay attention to the direction of this black equilateral triangle so this triangle is going to be pointing in this direction the long the base is right here the base is facing me so be sure you start like that and then you'll take the next piece and it's going to be pieced like this okay All right. so here is our first one the base is down right here and this is the next piece and it will go like this we take it and flip it over and we're going to match all three sides of this first one this is how we stitch you'll see that this has a little bit of a this is cut off here and I'll show you how we can gauge that in just a minute I'm going to go stitch this side here and then I'll come back and show you okay here is my stitching so I stitched along this side and if you look here I can't zoom in anymore but the, the stitching ended right where that point is right at the, the intersection of this cutoff edge and the, the, the triangle at the bottom and we're going to push this up and finger press now this is where it gets confusing because you see this it can go a number of ways it can go this way that way that way and so be sure and check your diagram and we know that our base wants to be at the bottom so this is the way we're going now these little nubs here we're going to cut them off the first time you'll have two nubs to cut off and every time after this you'll only have one okay so this is how we we do those first two the next one I always place it here just to make sure that's the way we're going and this edge here this is a straight edge this is a pointy edge and this is has the seam so this little cutoff edge here is going to go down here so if you look and you match the sides the point matches and this bottom part matches with the cutoff of the triangle so we're going to stitch right here and then right here at this tip is where your stitches will end now here is where I stitched you can see this one a lot better here is where the stitches end and you see it ends right at that point now here's we're going to flip this up and finger press like this and you should have about a quarter of an inch from this point 
out to the edge and then you turn over here and you see here's a little nub we're going to cut that off now your next one is going this way so the base always alternates the base is down the base is up down up but look you look for the cutoff part and you know that's going to go along this straight edge right here and then line up the point so you're lining up the straight edge across you're lining up this edge and the point then we're going to stitch here and if you start right if you're using a quarter of an inch it'll start right at this point and then go straight off so we'll come back so here is where we stitched we started here right at the point we stitch down and off the edge now we turn it like this finger press and then cut off this little nub you'll have a nice collection of nubs when you're done so your goal is to have as perfectly a straight line up here and down here as you can if it's not straight and it's a little bit off then don't worry about that I'm going to show you how to fix it later if you're way off you might want to rip it out and try it again but as long as you've got a nice almost straight line here then you're doing fine and if you have close to a quarter of an inch you'll be fine too so you go all the way down and what I do when I first start a row is I piece about six or eight of these then I take it up to my design wall and match it to the, the piece that's already there and make sure the design and the fabrics are in the right place. And you do that for the whole row and then we'll come back and stitch it to the previous row. Here is the finished row that I just showed you and I pressed it and starched it. And if you finger pressed along the way, you'll see that everything gets pressed from the top to the bottom and for the most part it's pretty even there's little hiccup here and there's a big hiccup further down and there's a few so you can tell it's not exactly perfectly straight but I'm not going to worry about that as long as I have a, a point that's there and it has a good amount of fabric for the seam allowance so a quarter of an inch but here's a big hiccup right here and it looks like I probably cut these a little bit too big so that's probably what happened now I'm going to show you how to uh, stitch these together and you're going to match each of these points uh, from this one to the one you're stitching it to and before you before you iron it or press it you should probably put it up next to the the previous row and make sure all your fabrics are in the right order there was uh, I put it up there and this one was too long and it turns out I had put instead of six of these triangles I put eight so this made it too long and it messed up the pattern and so then go ahead and um, press it and use starch uh, if you want I, I like to use the starch so and I always put um, a pin at the very top so I'll know which is which you can probably always check but it's better to to mark your top before so you don't have to go back and next I'm going to show you how to match uh, each of these points to the next one now I'm going to show you how to sew the two rows the vertical rows together this is my row 23 and 24 and row 23 I had to rip out a little bit so there might be a few little stray threads there but what you're going to do is you put them together like this then you're going to flip one over you're going to match each of these points you're first going to match these the black seams here and so just match those together and then along the sides here and we'll just put a, a pin there now to match these points you're going to go if you see the stitching goes this way and then this way so where the stitching intersects makes that little V you're going to put your pin in there in the top one then pick that up 
and look for the same area on the bottom one. This is going to be hard to see because here is the seam where it's pressed on this, uh, this triangle. And then I'm going to put the pin right at the very tip of the triangle. And then what you want to do is put them together and you want to look at the pin and make sure it's perpendicular. That means coming straight out of the fabric. If the pin is like this and it's going angled like that, it's not right. Your, your points won't meet. So you want to be perfectly straight like this. Then you turn it and put the pin in. Do the same thing all the way down. So you're going to match this top uh, point of the triangle and you can see there where it's matched where the three pieces come together and then find the same place right here and match them together. And now let me find a place that has different color fabrics. Oh, here's a good one right here. So here you see the, the point where the two meet right there and you can see that this the distance between this point and the edge of the fabric is not a quarter of an inch it's less than that but as long as we match these points up it'll be fine if we pay attention so here you have some different fabrics and here again is where the point meets and you see that this distance here is not really a quarter of an inch and so just make sure that your pin is perpendicular and put it in and you're going to do that down the whole side. Now to sew this together, you're going to start here, use your quarter inch foot. And I don't like to stitch over pins, but if you stitch over pins, you can go ahead. But I just put my, I take this pin out first and I put this in the, the machine and start at a quarter of an inch. And then what I do is I'm aiming for this next pin. And where this pin goes into the fabric, that's what I'm aiming for and if it's a quarter of an inch that's great if it's less than or a little bit more than a quarter of an inch I don't I don't worry about it so when I when I get to this point I take the pin out and then stitch right where that pin went into the fabric and then once you pass this part you aim for the next one so where the next pin goes into the fabric so you're stitching from pin to pin each time and most of the time it's going to be pretty good but sometimes you'll have a small like this one here that we ran into where this is not a quarter of an inch but if I just concentrate on going from pin to pin of course this one's not pinned but from this part down to this part then we'll get it get a straight line there and it should be okay so do that all the way down and and that's how you're going to sew all your all of your rows together now I finished all of my vertical rows and uh, before you trim the bottom and the top you should probably put it on the floor or the design wall or something make sure that you haven't stitched anything wrong make sure that these pattern is in place and then it has the 3d effect then what you're going to do is trim the bottom and the top these these uh, uneven diamonds and then apply the borders you're going to put your quarter inch mark right on this this point and then this point and the next point if it doesn't come out just right just kind of fudge it a little bit and if you have to leave a little more um, black on that's better than chopping off the point I'm matching the quarter inch mark right at the tip of this point and try to get three points in there so you can go from one to the other and then just trim it off like that make it straight and then go down to the next one I don't have a lot of room here match your quarter inch on your three points and trim One more. Now just continue like that.
trimming the points off on the top and the bottom. And then you'll add, uh, it calls for three inch borders, but I think I'm going to make mine two inches. I don't want a big heavy border on it. So once you trim the top and bottom, attach your borders and you're done.